Welcome to Nakla's workshop. Um, so today's video is uh, probably slightly dramatic, the title, but um, it's something I came across the other day and I thought it would be worth sharing with you because these Unimat um, lathes are quite expensive and it will it just sort of, um, if you're contemplating on buying one, thought this information may be uh, um, useful to you. As you can see, we've got three three here, and um, although they look primarily the same, there 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 are some subtle differences, and and it's um, ju just to uh, this is um, th this is the latest, uh, or I suppose that could be called. I think it might well be called a Mark IV um, Unimat, and they that it looks similar to. Let me just try and move you in with this camera. This all could go wrong because I'm not too good with the several cameras. So these have the plastic um, hand wheels. So it's a pretty easy way to identify one of the later models. Um, and to be truthful, there, there isn't much, as far as I'm aware, much difference between one of these, which is the later one, and one of these, the mid middle range one, which has the aluminium handles, uh, and so that's quite a simple way to tell. Now, a lot of these have the very, the light castings, you know, weight wise, um, which from my perspective, I, I've not really, I couldn't tell you that having one with the heavier castings um, is a better thing or not. Um, when you look at the, the, the one with the aluminium handles, some of them have the uh, the heavy castings and some of them have the light. There seems to be a mix between them. So, um, yeah, they, they, those and they, these are truly, as we can see from the uh, the name badge, are a Unimat SL or I think they are a DB Unimat DB in the in the US. Um, so these two are definitely those. Now this one. I've only just purchased this and it's not a complete machine but it looks pretty much the same you know same format the two rails everything everything the same but it is actually different and it's not I don't believe it's truly a Unimat SL it's a Unimat um, 2B and, and uh, a way of telling the difference one it has a slot here and if we look at the other ones, we don't. We have this pin here, and that's the pin to realign the headstock with the main base. Should you um, tilt this to cut a taper? Now this one has a slot, and what there should be is like a washer, a ground washer, which will fit in to to create the alignment for when you do the pin up in the side. Now. Um, so that's one difference. Um, it you can see these are more rounded. This casting compared with these, so they're more square. They're more rounded. Now that's all just sort of cosmetic-y thing. This is truly the cast base, and it's extremely heavy. You know, um, by quite quite a margin. You know, I was going to weigh them, but I. You know, I'm not sure that's going to really add to anything to the information I'm trying to tell you. So this one I bought, it didn't have a motor. So if we look at the, um, let's just try and move the camera down a bit. If we look at the motor brackets, this is a standard one off, a, off the normal SLs um, that I got fitted. Um, when we look at this one, which is off the, the Unimat 2B, it, it's physically... Uh, it's smaller so the actual gap between the the main shaft and where the uh, the motor bolts onto is smaller and we can see here also where the pulley goes one of the uh, the other pulleys go so this so you may purchase one of these and think oh well, that's fine I can get all the spares and all that but if you're trying to buy if you're new to this game and you're trying to buy belts that you can buy pre-made they're going to be too small if you've got one of these because everything's a lot closer 
So that's one of the problems. I think, I think purchasing one of these is fine if you get the complete thing, everything's there. But if you're buying one which has got bits missing and you're thinking, well, there's a good spare part market, I can, I can buy them, you could be in, in, in a bit of trouble. So this is one of the things that I've noticed is, is considerably different. Um, now if we, if, let me, um, sorry I have to keep touching the camera because these GoPros I can never tell whether it's filming or not. So let's take the Allen key off and we'll take the, we'll take the headstock off and I'll show you one of the other things that, that again is, is probably something that you maybe wouldn't know. Now, if we look at that, that's the bolt that holds it, holds the headstock on, and we can take that off. Okay. Now, if we take, a, let me take one off another one of the um, ESLs, or off an SL. Okay. Nearly there. Got a jar full of these things somewhere. So if we look at the oh, camera's going. If we look at these two, they're very different. Now this one is just uh, a straight uh, thread, where this one has got a taper on it. And when we look at, let's see if we can take one of these off. Oh no, here's one I prepared earlier. So here's another one. So this is off an SL. And we can look and we can see. These, these are very different in as much as this goes in and fits there to hold it in place whereas this one goes through and fits in there into the taper and holds that in place so that's that, that, that's quite a difference so if you decide well actually you buy one of these and you don't have the milling attachment, the post that fits in, and you think, oh, you, and you go and order a, a Unimat, one from a an SL, it will fit in the hole, but you don't then have the ability to put that in and do it. I guess you, um, let me just have a, have a look. You, I don't think you can use one of the other Unimat bolts no it won't go in so you can't even get one of those rather than the uh, I don't know where I've done with it um, so yeah so you can't even exchange the chain exchange the bolts to suddenly make it work as a milling machine so if you don't have the milling closed you're not going to be able to use it as a milling machine so it's important to, so again, it's an illustration of, you may find one of these, you think you're onto a bargain, but actually you could be onto a bit of a loser. If all you want to use it as a, is as a lathe, then everything's tickety-boo. Um, and again, if you want to do, if for some reason you wanted to change the headstock, one you'd have, let's move that, you would have uh, no way of aligning it properly because you've got one of one method and one of the other. You wouldn't have a way of securing it. So it becomes, um, these definitely aren't mix and match. You know, the SL and the 2B, are, they look the same, but they're two different things. Things like the chuck, okay, you know, you can swap the chucks, you can swap the uh, tool posts, you can swap uh, anything on the that goes on the tail stock. All that's compatible, but the the casting is very different. 
so I think it's just to, just to make you aware that there is is a difference and if you decide to go down this route just make sure you get as much of it as possible or you have the means to be able to make things yourself because it's not they're not the same I've never actually seen any of these for sale and I wasn't aware about this until I purchased this one I mean it, it, I haven't made a mistake I purchased this one I've been after one of these for quite a long time um, and um, so, um, so I'm pleased I got it. One of the other things, so um, just to recap a little, little bit, as we said, we've got more of a rounded casting here. They're generally selector, selector brands rather than Unimet SL. You're going to have the alignment slot there that's different. What is also different, if you look here, this is quite a wide strip here. And let me move you over a bit so we can see that that's quite wide. And when we let's move it around a little bit, if we look at this one, this is a bit narrower and you've got the slots in there. So that's very different, the two, that one and that one. And these tend to have the hand wheels are still and have flutes in them. Um, whereas We've got the plastic ones on here, or we've got the aluminium ones on here. So again, a difference. Now there is um, there is an earlier one than this, and which is a Mark One, which has the same curved um, base. It don't be tricked because it doesn't have that slot. Because this was a this on the on the two B this was a a step forward so it has no real means of aligning it. There's a little they they do make a small uh, thing that you put in there put in a tailstock and that's supposed to align it. And they're normally painted um, in a black uh, crinkly finish so you can recognise it. But a real simple way to recognise a Mark One is. This bit is goes right across, and the and the and the way bars slide into into a hole. So that's that's completely completely solid. So Mark ones are lovely because they're you know they are the first ones ever made. Um, very expensive, a good one now. If you can come across one, two Bs are fine if you've got a specific job. But you do need to be aware that you need um, you need the full set really if you're planning on doing milling. Yeah. Okay, so that's about it. It's really just a few words of um, just came a quick. Well, I don't know whether it's warning, but just a few bits of information that may help you if you're deciding to buy, you know, a Unimat. Because to be truthful, they're not all they're not all the same, you know, and. Um, because they go for silly money, I think it makes sense to uh, just to try and give you a bit of a heads up so you don't end up wasting your money. Okay, so um, all that's left for me to say is uh, many thanks for watching. Um, uh, stay happy, strong and healthy and I'll see you on the next one. Cheerio.